Japan's famous floating airport, the Kansai Airport, is slowly sinking. For the smart Japanese engineers, this is not a big deal. Can you guess what will happen to this terminal building if the left end sinks faster than the right? The question is, how can they avoid this catastrophe? The solution? Keep the entire terminal building on detachable pillars. Do you see the solution now? Using hydraulic jacks simply raises the left side pillars. The terminal building is saved from disaster and everything returns to normal. But did you notice the plight of the stairs during this operation? In fact, after a few years, the Japanese engineers had to add extra stairs to fill the gap. After the lift, the workers immediately tightened the bolts. This modern engineering marvel sinks six centimeters into the sea every year. Despite this, the authorities constructed another island runway in 2007, which sinks 21 centimeters every year. Why are they investing massively in a facility that is slowly going to be eaten by the ocean? The answer lies in the cross-section of the ocean floor. Did you notice a faint sand pattern here? This is a smart engineering technology called sand drains. The seabed the airport was supposed to stand on had a thick layer of soft waterlogged clay. Imagine building a massive airport on a seabed that has the consistency of a wet sponge. That was the challenge for Japan's Kansai International Airport. It would sink unevenly for decades. The plan was to squeeze the water out of the clay. The first step was to add a layer of sand above the seabed. Next, the engineers drilled thousands of holes into the ocean floor. These holes were also filled with sand. Eventually, the whole airport's weight would fall onto this sand structure. Can you imagine what happens then? The weight of the airport squeezes the water out of the clay, and this water is absorbed by the sand piles, draining the clay and making it stronger. In fact, the soil properties of Kansai's seabed are interesting. It's a mix of clay and sand layers extending more than 30 meters down. The engineers wanted to predict how much the soil composite would sink when the huge weight of the airport sat on it. The issue is that this settlement takes years to complete. There are three scenarios here. In the first, when the settlement is complete, the artificial island is well above sea level. A happy situation. In the second scenario, the island is below sea level once settlement is complete, which is very difficult to fix. Now for the worst case scenario. What if the soil settlement never stabilizes? Predicting the amount of settlement was a huge challenge for the geotechnical engineers. They had to develop special equipment and experiments to answer this difficult question. Different groups had different answers. The most accepted answer was 19 feet of settlement. By accepting this answer, the engineers went ahead with the project. If this answer turned out to be false, the airport would be doomed. The existing airport of Kansai, Itami Airport, was becoming overcrowded and overloaded with demand. Moreover, it was located in the middle of a residential neighborhood with no room for expansion, and the residents were annoyed by the constant jet engine noise. A new airport for Kansai was the only option left. And for the land, the only option was to build it on the sea. Remember, Japan is heavily populated, and it is not easy to acquire land from landowners. In the ocean, you don't have to worry about such problems. Obviously, before dumping a huge amount of earth, the engineers needed to prepare a seawall. Kansai is a region of heavy typhoons and storm surges. A simple seawall design would definitely fail. This is the design the Japanese engineers selected. It looks like a mountain inside the ocean. To erect and preserve this mountain with good stability, it needs a base with a good grip. Underwater divers performed this most crucial and meticulous task. They first arranged armor stones throughout the seabed above the sand layer. Remember, this is life-threatening work. The ocean currents underwater were high and unpredictable three miles from the seashore. The base layer acted like a stable foundation for the entire seawall. Next was the construction of the lower mounds and upper mounds. Once these mounds were ready, they added cladding stones. Finally, thousands of tetrapods were dumped on this stone cladding. 
The seawall, which is visible from the outside, was constructed after this. The tetrapods dissipate the energy of the ocean waves and protect the seawall. It took two and a half years to complete. To construct the corners of the seawall, steel chambers had to be piled first. Now, there was a monumental task in front of the engineers. They needed to fill the seawall with earth. The enormous quantity of fill material, over 180 million cubic meters, didn't come from the seafloor. It was quarried from three mountains in the surrounding Kansai region, primarily in the areas of Kobe and Awaji. Essentially, they moved entire mountains to create the island. This was a deliberate choice. The rock and weathered granite from these mountains were of very high quality and consistency, which was crucial for creating a stable, predictable foundation for the airport. At the mountains, giant excavators dug out the rock and soil. Please note, these mountains are close to the ocean. The authorities introduced the hero of the earth-filling operation, the giant barges. Using long conveyor belts, trucks filled the barges with earth. Then, the barge started its long journey of almost 28 kilometers. The barge entered the seawall boundary. The way the barge dumps the earth is amazing, in a single stroke. In fact, these weren't ordinary barges. They had large doors on their undersides, hoppers, that could be opened to release the load, a bottom dump design. A fleet of these barges operated 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for several years, making thousands of trips. While the island was being completed, another crucial project was happening simultaneously. The construction of the bridge connecting the island to the mainland. You can see many piles being driven into the seabed. These piles are the backbone of the bridge. The bridge piers had to be anchored to these piles. Giant floating cranes performed this difficult task. Once this job was done, gigantic steel trusses were delivered by the cranes and fitted between the piers. You might have observed that the trusses have a double-decker design. The bottom level is for trains, and the top is for car traffic. More interestingly, the joints of these trusses were flexible, saving them from deadly ocean currents and winds. Next, the engineers had to plan the terminal building. Model-based experiments revealed another alarming truth. To understand it and its solution, we had to CNC machine microhydraulic jacks. Look how beautiful they are. The website JLC CNC helped us with this experiment. They have over 600 CNC machines at their disposal, with 4-axis and full 5-axis capabilities. After finalizing the CAD model, you just need to specify the material and place the order. In case of any issue with the model, the expert team from JLC CNC will help you rectify the problem. I received this box one week after ordering, and look at the quality of the machining. It's satisfying to watch how smoothly this piston goes into the cylinder. This is the experimental rig we developed. The issue with the terminal building is that the wings are heavier than the main building. We have used soft soil below the terminal building. Let's check this building after a few hours of settlement. You can clearly see the deformation the building has undergone. In reality, such excessive deformation would crack the terminal building. A hydraulic jack lift is the solution here. It's now time to introduce the hydraulic jacks manufactured by JLC CNC between the pillars. One pillar needs a pair of jacks. They just need to loosen the nuts. Suppose the left wing has gone down by 10 millimeters. Should the engineers lift the pillars exactly 10 millimeters? During the lifting operation, you might notice that due to the reaction force from the jack, the foundation goes down a little bit. So, in reality, we have to lift more than 10 millimeters. This is a completely computer-controlled operation with sensors monitoring the settlement of the terminal building continuously. Once the lifting is complete, workers insert support plates and the hydraulic jacks can be removed.
Everything seemed to be going perfectly as planned, but the Japanese engineers made an alarming discovery. Within a few months, this man-made island had already sunk 27 feet. Remember, the prediction was just 19 feet. At 27 feet, the sinking hadn't stopped. The island was going down two inches every month. No expert knew when the sinking would stop or if it ever would. This news shocked Japan and the global engineering community. Most of the media branded the project as the biggest engineering blunder in history. Even the president of the Kansai airport resigned. They had only one solution. Dump more earth. The workers dumped an extra 11.5 feet of earth on the island. They also used every compacting technique available. The sinking didn't stop, but the engineers hoped this extra height would keep the airport above sea level for many more years. Engineers now had to focus on the architectural part of the terminal building. The terminal building of Kansai Airport has a unique toroidal shape. The brain behind this design was the popular architect Renzo Piano. A primary benefit of the toroidal shape is the unobstructed line of sight it affords to the air traffic control tower. The roof of the terminal is highest in the center and gradually curves down towards the ends. This subtle curvature ensures that controllers have a clear view of the entire runway and all aircraft movements. The airfoil-like curve of the toroidal roof also facilitates natural circulation within the vast terminal. Large ducts on one side of the building blow air upward, which then follows the natural curve of the ceiling. This airflow is then collected by intakes on the opposite side. This system eliminates the need for a complex network of suspended air ducts. Renzo Piano's biggest achievement was designing a lighter terminal building. Instead of heavy, solid concrete walls and low ceilings, the terminal relies on a visible steel skeleton. It uses a sophisticated system of trusses, lightweight but incredibly strong triangular frames to support the immense 1.7 kilometer long roof. This approach provides the necessary strength without the massive bulk of traditional construction. A heavier building obviously would have caused more rapid and severe sinking. Here comes another issue. This lighter terminal actually floats on the island. Since the building is lighter, it won't sink as fast as the island. If this continues, the foundation of the terminal will eventually be exposed. To make the building and island sink at the same rate, the engineers had to add a thick layer of iron ore to the foundation. With these clever precautions, the terminal construction progressed. Eventually, in 1994, this human-made wonder was inaugurated. On January 17, 1995, the Kansai region of Japan was rocked by the devastating Great Hanshin earthquake. The magnitude 7.3 earthquake left a trail of destruction, claiming thousands of lives. The Kansai International Airport weathered the intense seismic shaking with remarkable resilience. The terminal building, designed with innovative sliding joints and other earthquake-proof features, sustained no significant structural damage. Even the glass panels remained intact. The access bridge connecting the artificial island to the mainland also remained operational. The most notable impact on the airport was the appearance of minor cracks on the runway. This was attributed to soil liquefaction on the reclaimed land. In the critical hours and days following the earthquake, Kansai International Airport transformed into a vital hub for disaster relief operations. With many roads and ports severely damaged, the airport became a primary conduit for receiving and distributing emergency supplies, medical equipment, and personnel. The remarkable performance of the airport served as a powerful validation of Japan's advanced engineering and building codes. The floating airport in Kansai became an engineering marvel and a groundbreaking success. By the early 2000s, the original single runway island was reaching its capacity limits. The authorities planned a second island and runway, which opened in 2007. The sinking of the islands has slowed over the years, 
The first island is currently sinking at a rate of 6 centimeters per year. It has sunk a whopping 3.84 meters since the airport opened in 1994. The second island is sinking at a more rapid rate of 21 centimeters per year. The current official elevation of the island is 5 meters above sea level. A 2015 engineering study presented a stark timeline, predicting that the first island could be at sea level by 2067 or sooner. The same study projected a similar fate for the second island between 2058 and 2100. These forecasts are based on the continued compression of the soft clay seabed. It is important to note that these predictions are a subject of debate. Some Japanese engineers argue that these timelines do not fully account for the extensive and ongoing mitigation efforts. The airport authority has invested heavily in measures to slow the sinking and protect the facilities. The Kansai airport is obviously a modern day wonder. Before you leave, please don't forget to check out the amazing website of JLCCNC. The local fabricators near me were not able to fabricate this kind of micro and precise hydraulic jacks using metal. Finally, JLCCNC helped me. Take care. Bye-bye.